Welcome everyone. This is, you want to say what we're welcome. working? Welcome. <laughs> Happy Life Results Book Club Q&A session. And this is number 13. 13. And so I'd like to start us out with just a couple of announcements. One of them is pretty exciting. Um, we are getting closer and closer to stage three, which is the hero stage. And so Stacy is going to start doing something that is moving us into the hero stage type activities. Do you want to explain what that is, Stacy? Yeah, so you probably noticed that I have been taking quotes from the daily sections and putting them up in the blue color, which is kind of, it's the guide color. Mm -hmm. If you look in, if you have a copy of the book, um, all of the blue, the, the sections about the guide have um, graphics that are in blue, pictures that are in blue. And then in the hero section, it's in orange. So in, to prepare for it, I'm going to be posting quote or questions in orange. So you'll be able to see the contrast, the blue and the orange backgrounds. And I'll be asking questions that we can engage with. So we can share our, our you know, opinions and ideas and our learnings. And, and I'm trying to make the questions be with it really a simple answer like just say a few words to answer it um, because any of the longer you know the, the ones you've really thought about we thought that they would be posted along with the daily videos so it's just kind of a it's to help boost the engagement and also to prepare us for the hero stage where we're going to be doing application mm -hmm. cool yeah oh, exciting it's exciting so if you see orange just it's just gonna be just a short easy to answer just everyone, please, everyone put in something, put in some kind of answer, some kind of, it's, it's for the practice of doing something. Whenever you see the orange, it's something to do, an application. It's not sit back, yeah. it's not preview anymore. Yes. It's not even translate where you just think about how it, what it means to you. It's, this is an invitation to do something, to start getting used to taking steps. Every, every hero step is an actual action, so. Yep, so and if it. you're on YouTube, then you won't be able to see these questions, but you can do the same thing and post underneath and we can add, I'll start adding the questions to the description so you can look under the description. Mm. It won't be daily, um, but yeah. just oh, wow. periodically. Yeah. Sorry, YouTube crowd. Yeah. You're gonna miss this element. If we can figure out a way that we can re recreate this in the YouTube channel, we'll do that as well. Yeah. But for this part of the announcement, it's just the, YouTube, the uh, Facebook group. So come join us on Facebook. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Life Results Book Reading Group. Reading Book Group. Book Reading Group. Really? Reading Book Group. Book Reading. It's Book, book Reading. reading. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Book Reading. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, then, that was the only announcement. Did you mm -hmm. have any anyone, anyone else in there? Nope. Any on the crew? Okay, that's the only main announcement that we had. And so I will move next to the questions. We invite you, if you have any questions, any comments, anything you want to throw out there for us to react to, uh, anything at all, go ahead and put those in. And we have our support here, checking comments and whatnot. So hopefully we'll see it and, and have a chance to respond to it. Um, so let's go to our questions. Question number one. What do you do if you feel like you know what to do, but you just aren't doing it. Yes. Okay. So I love this question because, um, hi Sarah. Hey Welcome. Sarah. <laughs> because I have, I have been able to kind of be more self-observant of the things that I, one day I decided to do. And then three days later when I didn't do anything, I kind of know a little bit more about what to ask myself to figure that out. And so I'd like to share that with you. It's kind of fun. And um, I, I've, had, I've come up with my own kind of ways of <laughs> describing it, my own terminology. And I just want to tell you really quick. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. Okay. It's your, this is your group. Okay, so you know how there's this scotch tape that's decorated that's called washi tape? It's really popular in Asia. It's, um, it's like a sticker, but it's on a roll and it repeats. And it's really lightly, it's lightly adhesive. It has a really light adhesive, so you can stick it on things and move it around, and it's just really fun. And so, um, one of the things that we've done as as a team is to pick an um, an area of our workspace or our life that will see this 
we put the washi tape on it and then like your computer monitor or on your chapstick or something where you'll see it re regularly to remind you of something, something that you had decided to do. So either a, a physical action or something that you wanted to think about to understand better. So you could, if you were on um, doing the application stage for the lens, you could put washi tape on your mirror and then it would remind you to think about the lens that that day, you know, something like that. Okay, so washi tape was this great idea, right? I had something that I wanted to do, I put the washi tape on it, but then what happened is I would almost like make the washi tape disappear. It was like I wanted to do this thing and then now it was like not even on my mind at all for a couple of days. <laughs> and then when I realized it, even though the washi tape was somewhere I had seen regularly, I blocked it out for some reason. It was like it wasn't even there. The thing that I wanted to do had disappeared. And so we, this is where I'm getting better at asking myself questions to figure out why. Why is the thing that I wanted to do not being done? And I, and I still want to do it. Like, what's going on there? <laughs> and we've, we also, another um, a way to picture this before we get to the answer, answering this question. And for those just joining, the question is, what, hap what do you do when you have something you've already decided you want to do, you, you, ha you have the resources and things, and you just realize you're not doing it? Um, sometimes you don't realize until it's been a few days or even longer, and you're like, wait, I thought I was going to do that thing, and it just isn't happening. So Stacy just described washi tape is one of the things where we decided to do something, to think about something, to take an action, and then put something as a reminder, and then it just disappears. Like, almost like the reminder isn't even doing its job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then uh, another example of that is, and this is a little different, but negative space in art. The, um, what's a good example? I, I'm, I can't think of a, a piece of art that in, immediately makes it but it's where the artist makes use, especially in really simple, especially logos and things like that, where the space where the artist didn't draw, your eye fills in to make the, the picture complete, but it's the absence of the line that tells you something, and in this case, it's the absence of doing something. The absence of doing something she decided to do where she realized something was happening and so she was paying attention to that, that the not doing. The not doing and, and the not even thinking about doing. <laughs> yeah, okay, so tell us more about this. Okay. What do you do, what, what are some of the... Yeah, so in this case, it's really helpful to have an accountability partner that can help you observe yourself not doing the thing. <laughs> and so what we've done is we've just had a moment to check in with people and, um, oh, we've got some negative space. Okay, this is... Get it closer to the camera. Sorry. Let's see if this works. Okay, so if you can tell, this is for... Um, we have a son who has a business with magic cards, and this is one of the characters. And notice that the leg isn't actually drawn there. The leg is complete negative space. In fact, most of the person is negative space. In that there are no drawings for the person, it's mostly drawing for the hair and the clothing. So that's how negative space actually gives you the picture. The leg is the perfect example. Yeah, let's the leg is closer. Let's get a close up of the leg. See, look, there is actually And if we no, get it close enough, you wouldn't be able to know what is this no, is. Yeah, with, if you get close enough, there is nothing drawn there. There's no leg. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, so to have a, an accountability partner, someone that can kind of help you ask ask you questions and say how is that thing going <laughs> and then you go oh it disappeared <laughs> yes. it was in the negative space yes and uh, one of the questions that i ask myself is is there a bully there <laughs> is there something about it that i would avoid doing and it's funny because avoiding thinking about it avoids the bully completely <laughs> mm -hmm. i don't even have to feel the pressure of the pain points or feel the bully because I completely, it's just gone, it disappeared. So I, it's, I'm sure you've had examples where you've had a bully and whenever you thought about doing the thing that you wanted to, you kind of felt like, oh, I should do that, but I don't really want to. This is even more 
difficult to spot sometimes because it's I wanted to do that thing and I'm not doing it and I have no clue why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to do it. I have all the steps and the tools and everything in place, but it's just disappeared from my consciousness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so especially if you're already using the traditional method, then, so what, what, Stacy, what we're asking here is how, if you're already using the traditional method, you're trying to get to the point where you use more up principles, so where you can just pick things and just go for them. But in this transition phase or in an area where you haven't realized you're doing this, yes. the invisible, the negative yes. space, the washi tape type experiences, <laughs> exactly. once you figure it out, once you catch yourself saying, ah, oh, this is one of those situations where for whatever reason, I'm just completely spacing out the thing that I decided I wanted to do. What do you do in order to reverse that trend so that you actually take steps and you start making progress? Mm -hmm. Okay, so then what, what I look at is I look at, I, I, I realize that I'm using pain points. I'm using the traditional method. I'm using the bully. And then what I do is I look and inspect and I see, hey, Monica. <laughs> so cool. Oh, oh. Yes, we will answer your question. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, so what I do is I realize that when I'm using the traditional system, that was that those were the best tools that I had. Being able to use bullies and pain points, those were the best tools in my toolbox to use because they got at least got me started. They got me some results. So instead of feeling like feeling bad that I used the bully or the method of the bully, instead of kind of beating myself up about the way that I did it, the approach that I had, I realized those were the tools that I had at that time that was the best I could do, and they were effective up to a certain point. They were giving me the results that I was getting up to a certain point. So that's number one, is to realize that was the system I was using mm -hmm. and that it helped me, so I'm not blaming myself. It was, all, it was the best that I could do at that time. And to realize now I have new tools. I have up mastery now. So then what happens is then I can apply up mastery, all, all of the concepts, and realize that I don't have to use the bully anymore. And the, while the bully had its place, I no longer need to use it. So just labeling it and realizing that you used it and it was okay at the time, but now I have a better system, it will work wonders for getting rid of your washi tape mm -hmm. things. <laughs> okay, so you're saying one of the first things is recognizing it, like seeing that something's happening. Yes. There, but not bullying yourself about the fact that you're doing it. Yes. Because then you're do, kind of reinforcing the yes. same process. Okay, so then of course, if you have up mastery, that's another thing. What about intermediary okay, steps? Okay, so though? two intermediary, intermediary yeah. steps. Yeah. One of them is to create bite-sized chunks out of the thing that I want to do. Make each step so tiny and so easy and approachable that I could, I don't have to ignore it because the bully isn't big. Maybe the bully is just tiny. Just do this little tiny thing until mm -hmm. I can stop using the bully and get confidence that I can get that momentum because taking action will minimize the effects of the bully. One of our team members described it as tiptoeing past the bully. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> Baby steps and you just tiptoe tip right past the bully. This is none who doesn't even notice you. So have a very tiny next action that's very clear. You know exactly, you don't need any other steps before. The very next action that you can take. Yes. And you just do that and that's it. You're not trying yeah. to accomplish the final, and, the and whole thing, right? And actually the bully will let up if you're taking yeah. action. Oh, you're moving. Because the bully is there, uh, the bully is there to push you towards your goal. It's just you don't want to get pushed because it's not very comfortable so you end up side, you know, like detouring around it. But if you're actually taking action, the bully steps back. Like, oh, you're, you are, you don't need to push, you're moving. Yeah. Oh, 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 you still don't need to push, you're still moving. Yeah. It's not very fast, I but know. you're moving. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. <Stop> <laughs> yeah. I won't push you because you're moving. Um, so then there's two. Okay, there's two. So the second one is, and I'm, okay, the second one is when you decide and then you just kind of hold off on deciding again for a while. So mm -hmm. you will decide in the future, you will have a period of time, like let's say in one week's time, I'm gonna reevaluate my decision. But just decide for one week and then don't revisit it because when you revisit decisions, that's where the bully can come in. That's where you're like, oh, should I do this or not? Should I get up for the gym or not? Should I? And then when you do the, should I? Then the bully can come in and go, oh, you didn't really wanna do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Let me, let me rephrase that too. So you're saying, so we had the number one and number two. One was uh, 
don't beat yourself up about the fact that you have a bully. Acknowledge it, but be aware of it. And, and also, yes, so one aspect of the don't beat yourself up mm -hmm. is that those were the best tools you had at the time. Uh -huh. the, and it works it to work, a point, yeah. right? There's, there's some level of effectiveness. Yeah. So I know that's included yeah, in the yeah. don't beat okay. yourself up, okay, but great. I just had to And emphasize. the number two is to tiptoe past, yes. like take the little next ex action, next action, next action. Okay, so number three, you're saying... Oh, there are three now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Glad I have my left brain husband Number here. <laughs> three, you are saying that you... Um, well, Decide. So pay, make, make a decision in a window. Yes. And make it an optimal decision-making window. So don't wait until it's right before the alarm's going off and you have to decide to get up and then revisit whether yes. or not you want to get up, right? Because right. you're going to be struggling against yourself at that point. Exactly. So when you're, when you're like sitting back and you have the best view of what you want to do, make a decision in that window and then decide when you're going to visit it again. Mm -hmm. So you said one week. Yeah. So I, I decided now I'm going to get up and work out. For this week, I'm not going to re-decide. I'm just going to get up and work out. And then next week, I'll decide if I still want to keep it yes. going. Right? That's yeah, exactly, that's exactly cause right. Because actually, the decision-making process opens the door to the bully. Opens if, the door to the bully. Like, Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't open the door. Process opens the door to the bully. <laughs> and as long as you're taking baby steps yes. and not opening the door. Yes. Tiptoe past that bully. Tip -toe, then, then you have... Okay. Anything else on that? No. Okay, so, so now, really quick, no, oh, okay, really quick question one. before that. <laughs> okay, sorry, I got excited. <laughs> is the question was asked, can you be your own bully? Oh, yes, 100%. Absolutely. You're not, it's actually not an external bully most of the time. It's you pushing yourself. Yeah. And, and even if you think it might be someone else pushing you, it's how you interpret yeah. them. So in a sense, that's also an internal bully. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> okay, so, all right, let's see, whoops, um, okay, so <laughs> she wrote a note, that's cool, okay, so that's, any other questions, any clarifying, we're gonna, we're gonna move forward, so if you do pop them up, we can come back and, yeah. and clarify, and, all right, so the next question is, um, talking about how do you stop letting, like, okay, so if you have something that you want, but you're not moving towards it, how do you let go of what you don't want, but still go for what you do want? Yeah. Right? That was Because that letting the... go, sometimes when we have a direction we want to go, and we start to feel that pressure from the internal bully that's like pushing us to do it, but then we're resisting against the pressure because we don't like to be bossed around. <laughs> so then mm -hmm. we, so then there's some, um, there's a phrase that says, let go, like let go of it. And a lot of times people interpret that as, well, let go of the goal, let go of the mm -hmm. thing that you want. Mm -hmm. And that's not what we're saying at all. So mm -hmm. yeah, let, let go of the, the bad feelings about it or let go of the yeah. things that are holding you back or let go of. Yeah. Cause think about it. Okay. So sometimes when you want to do something, there's something that you you want to do and then you have the bully there to motivate you to get you going and then you go and then you start to the bully starts bullying you to do the thing that you wanted so you want to kind of resist the bully and rebel against the bully so what ends up happening is at that moment you're not actually doing the thing that you want to do so when we say letting go let go of not doing yeah. what you want to do oh yes that's <laughs> re that reminds me yeah it's it's funny because a lot of you were you're talking this morning uh, about when you're trying to push yourself or you're making yourself uncomfortable about it and feeling like that's work yeah like feeling like that's that's getting you closer to the goal because you're feeling bad about the goal right yeah and i likened it to um when you procrastinate mm -hmm. because when you procrastinate and you're not doing the task how are you feeling there's actually, it feels like you're kind of working on the thing that you're procrastinating because you feel you're focusing on it and you feel, it feels like, it's work. like you're worrying, you're, you're worrying about yeah, it's it. It's worry so. and work. Yeah. <laughs> Procrastination. It's, it's feeling bad, but it feels like you're, you're moving yourself, inching yourself forward. Mm -hmm. So you're actually making progress where actually you're not. <laughs> yeah. The bully does not see that as tiptoeing. <laughs> you're sitting there. Feeling bad about it, you are not tiptoeing, not, you're not moving, you're still just sitting there. Yes, and the bully is hovering over you. <laughs> and pushing you. And you're not budging yes. yet. So, so the little soundbite for that is pain is not progress. Mm -hmm. It's the action. Like if you're using the bully method, 
the pain itself isn't giving you progress, it's any action you take to move forward to get away from the pain, that part is progress. But it, it can be short-lived if the bully, the pain of the bully gets to be too great. Yeah, and, we, and we've talked about yeah. and there's more we could say about that, but, yeah, but, I think but that's, that's, good. Yeah, that's the main point for that, right? Okay, so one other th question that we had, and then I think that's all we have time for today. Um, yeah, so let's talk really quick about the difference about being happy about something. Yeah. And how selecting and don't select. So, so here's an example. Because you're you're talking about trying to use happy, good, power, good feelings, positive energy, all of different, you know, optimal peak experience. Yes. <laughs> trying to use optimal peak experience for things. If someone were to use the words for happy, and to say, I, I got a flat tire. Are you telling me I'm supposed to be happy about this flat tire? I'm so the. I'm supposed to see this flat tire and approach it with happiness. Is that what is that what that means? Because it's it's yeah. I'll just okay. let you take it from yes. There. Okay, so this is where we we rely heavily on the idea of is this my direction? Does this fit in my direction? You know, do you remember the part about laser focus and how you get really clear on your directions and then you take things in your life and you compare and say, does this fit in my direction or not? And then if it fits, then you're like, yes, it fits, and you go forward with it. So would you say on your way to work that getting a flat tire fits in your direction? No, absolutely not. No, it doesn't. No. It's keeping, it's like yeah, an it's obstacle. Yeah, it's the opposite of my direction. Yeah, and so it doesn't, you just don't bring the up-down emotion into it. It's just, does it fit in my direction or not? If it does, then get more of that. Include mm -hmm. more of that. Let that be in your direction. Focus on that thing because it it fits. But if it doesn't fit, that doesn't mean that you need to not be happy inside. Optimal peak experience mm -hmm. inside. You bring your optimal self to each circumstance, but you include more of the things that fit in your directions, and you exclude things that don't fit in your directions. Mm. So let me see if I can re, re feedback what I'm hearing here. Uh, the the term uh, happy. Like feeling happy when my f tire is flat. You're telling me there there's something in there where I'm saying happy about the tire being flat. That's saying I shouldn't want the tire to be flat. It's I don't have to want the tire to be flat. It's not in my direction. I don't have to want it, but it doesn't have to make me unhappy. Yes. That's what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's what I'm I got saying. it. I got it. All right. So. <laughs> Yeah, so when you, um, and also look at your definition, look at the vessel you're using for the word happy, because sometimes mm. happy means um, not looking at the facts. Happy means, you know, how a certain person could interpret mm -hmm. it and say, and think that there is, there is something that you, <laughs> so we could get into a long discussion about mm -hmm. the facts. Um, we actually had a long discussion about it this morning. So <laughs> like, I was like, let's go. Here we go. <laughs> no, but we can't. Yeah, so that could be for another day. But um, just that, just that realizing you can bring an optimal internal state to every circumstance and that you can ma um, manipulate your environment. You can fix your environment and your circumstances to fit your directions as much as possible. But if something pops up that's not in your direction, it doesn't have the power to change your internal state to make you unhappy, but it is something that you can do your best to uh, like not have in your life, mm -hmm. not have mm -hmm. in your directions. And if it helps you at all, with the simplicity model, this is uh, just one application you could have for this. If you're thinking about what is a an up emotion with the right amount of energy and the focus on the tire, that what's a word that would fit that that you would describe as a, a, a way that you, you wouldn't call it happy with a flat tire, but you would call it something like confident or capable it's something you can handle it's not going to hold you back mm -hmm. this is you you're you have you're innovative you're creative you are problem solver like whatever word you would come up with that represents you can still be positive have a positive and appropriate energy and the focus of the tire may be happy or grateful or those other words wouldn't be the word you would choose for that but those three things can be there yeah and you can solve the Optimal problem. Optimal internal state yep. with how, whatever, whatever energy you think is good yep. for that, and then your focus is the tire. Yep. So if you take if you take a situation like that, the tire or something else, and you go, okay, 
what is a word I would use that would, that would keep the positive, the energy, and the focus that I could have in that situation? And I understand from the, you know, thinking it through that it's possible. And yeah, and some people have broader terms for the word happy than others. Mm -hmm. I have always had a very broad term for the word happy. It could encompass all of my up emotions. I could say happy because that's just me. That's mm -hmm. how I'm used to being and how the word, that's the vessel. The meaning I put in my vessel and other people have like giddy or some yeah you know, like they have a very narrow yeah. and it's maybe not even one they would want to yeah. feel very yeah, often yeah exactly this, some what, people's word for happy is undesirable which most is, of the time which is which is why you're translating things into your, your language. language and we're we're going to continue doing that this week this is still guide two stage two this is translation so continue to do those on the daily basis look for the orange questions Stacy's going to post and. If you had any other questions following this or throughout the week, let us know because we're going to be back next week, Friday, yes. for another live. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Bye.